Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. How are we doing this morning? It's so good to see you all. Let's go ahead and stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. One, two, three, and... This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is a day. Sing it again, y'all. This is a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is Worship the Lord, He deserves our praise. He deserves our praise. Just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord, He deserves our praise. He deserves our praise. Let's worship the Lord, who deserves our the sing of his goodness for all our days. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. He deserves our praise. Play that guitar for my. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hey, where are you standing? Let's go ahead and find somebody new, somebody familiar. Say, I love you. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made.
Holy Lord, from above, fill us up with your love. For my heart and my flesh cry out for you. Son of God, righteous one, by your grace we have come into your presence, holy God, to seek your Son of God, from above, fill us up with your love. For my heart and my flesh cry out for you. worthy of our praise. Amen. A 
Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Fight, lay behind the storm. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. Above all power, above all king, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Fight, lay behind the storm. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all, like a rose. Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all One of my favorite verses One of my favorite lyrics Like a rose trampled on the ground so we got one more for you. So we all know we're, what we're going to be doing in heaven, right? We're going to be up there worshiping the Lord. Amen. Oh, wow. We're going to be up there worshiping the Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. We got one more for you. Two, a three. A four. Gonna cry in my place as long as I'm alive. I glorify a soul in death. Ain't no rock gonna cry in my place as long as I'm alive. I glorify a soul in death. I said, Praise his holy name as long as I'm alive. I glorify a soul in death. 
I said, ain't no tree, y'all, gonna live this branch. I left my hands glorify this holy day. I said, praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify this holy name. I said, praise his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify Holy name. Play that guitar one more time. Huh? Let me play my piano. Gonna sing in my place. I lift my voice to glorify His holy name. Hallelujah. Said ain't no bird. We're gonna sing in my place. I said I lift my voice to glorify His holy name. I said praise His holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. I said, praise y'all, his holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Now ain't no rock gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive, I glorify his holy name. Ain't no rock, y'all, gonna cry in my place. As long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. I say praise His holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. I say praise His holy name. As long as I'm alive, I glorify His holy name. I say. Welcome to Desert Springs. We're glad you've joined us. This is Pastor Colin with some important announcements. If this is your first day with us, please stop by the Connecting Place counter. We have a gift for you and want to say thank you for coming. Coming tomorrow and Tuesday, July 18th and 19th, Pastor Colin is hosting a CPR and first aid class here at DSC. This class is open to our church body to come learn life-saving skills and includes accreditation with the American Red Cross. Classes are in the law from 9 to 1 p.m., cost is $95 for the whole course. You must be 14 years old or older to join. If you'd like to participate, show up on time to the class at 9 a.m. or contact Pastor Colin for more information. In addition to our CPR classes, Desert Springs Church is looking for members who are interested in joining our Emergency Preparedness Committee. An Emergency Preparedness Committee establishes and implements plans to reduce the destruction of natural and man-made disasters that impact us here locally. Please call our church office or contact Sharon Wren if you'd like to join or need more information. Forest Home Christian Camp is here. If you or your child plans on going on our upcoming excursion, please finish paying and registering for camp as soon as possible. 
In addition to our Forest Home news, thank you to all of those who prayed and supported our youth summer camp to Forest Home. The experience was life-giving, spirit-filled, and a few students gave their life to Jesus for the first time. As our DSC kids head up the mountain in the coming weeks, please partner in prayer with us for the week of July 24th through the 29th that God would do abundantly more than we could dream or ask. Thanks. Coachella Valley Rescue Mission is holding its annual Backpack Bonanza. This season, be on the lookout for large white boxes in the lobby where you can donate simple school supplies such as backpacks, pencils, notebooks, and other school items to help a Coachella Valley child in need. We really appreciate your generous support. You can leave your offering as you exit service with one of the ushers at the doors. If you want to know what's going on at Desert Springs Church, check your program or visit us online at visitdsc.org for everything else that's happening. Matthew 5, 14 says, You're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. This morning I've got a question. What is your bushel? What is your basket? What is that thing that's covering up the light that God has put in front inside of you? So first let's talk about the light. The light that God has put in us is portrayed in the scripture in many different different ways. And that light we have to look at. The light initially in our lives and we sing a little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. In 1 Peter, the verse says, grow up. This little light is okay when you were a little person. This little light is okay when you were a beginning person in following Jesus. That's the little light. We need to have the light that's portrayed in the scriptures in our lives. And what is this light that changes us? People are drastically changed in the scripture when they see this light. It's not a little light, it's a drastic change. In John 1, John the Baptist is out eating bugs and his camel hair and calling people to repent to turn around that the kingdom of God is at hand. When he sees Jesus, he doesn't go, oh, look over there, there's Jesus. Hi, Jesus, how the heck are you? He sees the light of God and retorts, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We need to see Jesus in that light. We need to have that light inside of us that cries out, behold, the Lamb of God. It's the light that Paul gets blinded on in Acts. He's, as far as he's concerned, he's serving God to the max. He's doing everything in service to God. And Jesus knocks him off the horse, blinded by a light. And he says, Lord, who are you? The light is impenetrating him. And he knows that he's being touched by God. He's being touched by God in a real way. In Acts 2, we see the light of Pentecost coming down. And we got a bunch of nervous, scared apostles up in a, in a, in a room together, kind of cowering from God. And the light of God at Pentecost comes to rest on each one of them like a fire on their head. And they are filled with the light of God that shines out. And they go out being from a timid group of men cowering in a room to a group of men boldened by the light of God saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. It is at hand, speaking to people in languages they didn't know. The God, the light of God flowing through them. In Acts 2, that light is shown in a transformed, a turned around life that goes out and speaks the word boldly. Finally, in Revelations 5, if you can't see 
if the light of God isn't being shown to you, if the light of God isn't in your heart, you have to be able to see that in Revelations 5. It says, who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to break the seals? And it says, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God is worthy. So when we have that light inside of us, we see the worthiness of God that forgives us of our sins. We see the light inside of us that causes us to go out. And if you still have that little light inside of you, it's time to get that light growing. It's time to get that light filling you up. So it's this light that changes lives. In Luke, we're encouraged, Luke 14, we're encouraged to count the cost. A couple weeks ago, we had a VBS and some kids were baptized and make decision for God. And that was just great. They have a little light. But as they grow up and as we grow up, God says, okay, count the cost. The gift I give you, the gift of salvation, this forgiveness is a free gift, but it's not cheap. I want your life. I want you to change. And I can change you if you get a vision of that light. So how do we light that light? How does that light get lit? lit? Like it was in the beginning with these young people at VBS. They just said, yes, Lord. In our lives, there's whole bunches of different ways. Uh, we can say, well, you've taken the Coral Ridge Evangelism course. I know the Roman road. I know this. We need to pray this certain way. I don't care how you do it, but in essence, all you're saying is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I want to have this forgiveness of sin. Yes, Lord, I want you to rule my life. Yes, Lord, I want you to take care of everything. Not me, but you. And Lord, whatever you desire. I jokingly say, you know, Lord, I'm willing to do anything you want, but not a missionary to Africa. Not a, God says no. There's no exceptions. When you say yes, Lord, it's Lord, whatever you want me to do, whether that's cleaning the floor or preaching or playing music or visiting the poor or talking to people on the street. When you see somebody on the street, don't be cowering away from them. If the light of God is in you, you should be able to approach them. Saw a man on the street the other day, wanted to give him some money. And I know there's a bunch of controversy about, should we give him money or should we not give him money and what are they gonna do with it? Well, I give him money occasionally if the Lord puts it on my heart. And I approach this guy and I said, take this in the name of Jesus. He says, I'm a follower of Satan. Well, I said, that doesn't work with me. I said, you found out that on the street when people say Jesus, if you say, I follow Satan, that'll make them shut up and go away. That's not going to work with me. I want to talk to you a little bit about Jesus. And here, take this money in the name of Jesus. That light that's inside of us causes us to step out beyond our safe space. I have a safe space and the Lord says, no, I'm going to blow that up. The light that's inside of you has to shine everywhere. That light shows the inadequacy of our sins. The inadequacy in us. And that's what light does. If I were to shut off all the light in here, I could have a conversation and say, you know, I'm just the handsomest man in the world. I'm just, I, you know, my handsomeness would just blow you away. And then all of a sudden, you lights would be turned on and you would see that's not true. The light shines on us and gives us truth. 
It shines on us and says, okay, these things that you think, those are false. Here's the truth. I'm going to shine this light on it to show you that's the truth. Well, I'm not a alcoholic. I just have a couple drinks in here. And the light shines on the truth and says, oh, yeah. Oh, I just, uh, I've got these pills that I take because I've got pain in, in my shoulder and I've had it for three years. And the light shines on it and says, oh, yeah. Do you take it when you don't have pain? Somebody comes by and I aggravated with them. The light shines on it and says, who are you to be aggravated with them when I've shown you mercy and grace and love? That light shows our sins and has, hopefully makes us turn around. That light lights our path. In the scriptures, we see, if you look, it says, wait over and over again. I truly believe that when the Lord lights our path, that we go to him and he gives us direction. I truly believe if you have to make a quick decision about something that's really important, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say 99% of the time, if you have to make a quick decision, don't do it. I believe the Lord says, wait, wait, wait. And if we go before him, that light bathes us and says, no, don't go that direction. And then we can make the decision because we've waited. If we want our path lit, we don't run down the path. We walk down the path so we can see the steps in front of us. So with that light that's burning inside of us, we can now make decisions that our path is lit in such a way that when we make decisions, we wait on him and he guides us in all these decisions. The light is for you for forgiveness. We don't have a clear understanding of forgiveness until we reflect on what jerks we were. I'm schlepping around doing things and God says, touches me with his light and says, no, you can't just walk around. If you need to be reformed, turn around, transformed. Let my light inside so that it may permeate you and change your life. The light is there. When it lights our path, it makes it so we don't stumble. You know, I go out here at night and around here they've got this uh, light, uh, uh, dimming of light things with the, all the lights around so as not to disrupt the sky. And so a lot of the areas here, you have to really have a good flashlight if you're going to walk around, otherwise you're going to stumble. The light that God gives us is so that we don't spiritually stumble and hurt ourselves spiritually. We'll fall down. I love, I love the uh, Phillips translation of... Uh, being talking about us fall down and it says we're knocked down but we're never knocked out and this light that lights our path makes it sure that we don't stumble that we don't fall and if there is a fall god is there to pick us up god is there to take care of us but are we watching that light in our steps so that we don't stumble that's what we need to do your light encourages others. The light that's inside of you is to encourage one another. I want you to think, what do you want others to inscribe on your tombstone? Now, you don't have any choice in the matter. You're dead. What, what, would you, what do your life represent that you would want them to write on your tombstone? I thought about this for a while. And I thought, all I want is three words. He encouraged me. He encouraged me. Your light encourages others. It doesn't discourage others. I uh, am very careful when I say, I've got a word from the Lord. In fact, probably 
in my life, I could probably say five times in my life have I ever said that type of sentence. I've got something from God for you. This, I think, is from God. This is a word of the Lord. So I take that very seriously. So I want to talk to you, and I've got a word of the Lord for you. If you're the person that doesn't encourage, if you're the naysayer, that when somebody comes up and says, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to have a back operation. Oh, well, my friend had a back operation, and they're in a wheelchair the rest of their lives. My daughter, they're having a baby that, oh, yeah, my friend, they, had a, they were in labor for 15 months. They broke his arm. He broke his collar. Oh, yeah, and it was never the same. He couldn't move his arm the rest of the life. I have a word from the Lord to you. Shut the heck up. You're set on this world. If that light is inside of you, it's set inside of you to encourage one another, not discourage one another, not to throw out discouraging words. And this light, if indeed you have a clear vision of it, it gives you peace. It gives you peace. It takes away the anxiety, the craziness. I mean, we have got so much in the world, and I say right now, but it's always been that way. Everything from uh, uh, politics to economics to whatever that we get crazy about, and the Lord says, peace. I want you to have peace. Give that up to me. It's my world. It's my universe. It's the things going on. Give them up to me that you might have peace. And the more we dwell on that, the less the light shows, and the more we don't have peace. And finally, the other sea, that light inside of us, the scripture says, glorifies God your Father. Whenever I think about that scripture, I think about a brother, George Puglia, who I used to play music with, and we played at this uh, retreat type thing, and it was just great. I mean, we were doing, we were really doing good. Everything was right on, and, and we got done with the whole thing, and he says, come on, we need to pray. This was afterwards. And his prayer started out, Lord, please take the glory for this performance because I'm ready to grab it myself. We're so quick to take responsibility and glory for something when it's God's. Sister Lorraine here, Whenever you say anything to her that encourages, well, besides encourages her, but that glorifies her in any way, the first thing out of her mouth is praise God. And this is what we need to be. I want people to see something in me that's produced by God working through me. And I want them to be glorifying God. Not glorifying, Larry. So this light biz has been lit, and it shows the way in a number of ways. First of all, it shows it in a life that's reformed. And reformed means really that it's, it's being in, improved. It implies improvement, that our life is being changed and that it's being improved. It's not just being changed and uh, all of a sudden, uh, now I act completely different. That may happen, but it's a life that's changed on the inside. And because it's changed on the inside, that light permeates us and it shows on the outside. That light is, transforms us. and transforms our, our thoughts. In James, it says, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. And I go, Lord, that's messed up. I just, considering it all joy when I encounter various trials, 
it just doesn't sit with me. It's something that I can't do. And, but when that light transforms us, we realize that we don't consider it all joy that the thing is happening to us. We consider it all joy on how we respond to it because of the light of God shining in us. How do we respond to it? That's how we consider it all joy. When someone before said something and it just was really irritating to you and you go, man, I just want to smack them. That's what the transformed life changes. Transformed life changes from, I just want to smack them to, Lord, have mercy on them. They're, they're bound up in this thing. There's no peace in their life. There's no light. A transformed light is how we react to others. And when it's talked about consider it all joy, there's always been the uh, acronym of joy, meaning Jesus, others, and yourself. In everything in our life, in our walk, when that light is inside of us, we see Jesus, others, and then finally me. There used to be a, a trite thing around, what would Jesus do? And although I hate those little, uh, I'm really bumper stickers and all that stuff, I really am not big on it all. But it is a true point. Look at the scriptures and say, how would Jesus handle that? Jesus is our litmus test. When somebody says something, when somebody does something, when somebody reacts, if we use Jesus as our litmus test and say, what would Jesus do in this situation? We're going to come out all right. And how do we know? Because we read. If you haven't, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, just read them over and over again. Granted, there's so much other in the scriptures that we need to learn. But if we understand how Jesus reacted in a situation, the light of God in us is going to show us how we should be reacting in a situation. So we consider it all joy when we encounter various trials. And the reason we consider it all joy is because how we react. Because the light inside of us makes us react differently, makes us react godly, makes us react righteously, because we know what Jesus would do in a situation. By the power of his Holy Spirit, those things would be done in, in our lives. We have a new attitude. If that light permeates us, we have a new attitude. What we see here in the body, in church, we need to have a new attitude if we shy away from anybody, either physically or mentally. When we go in the family room, if there's somebody sitting by themselves, we need to go sit with them. If we sit, see somebody and they're not dressed appropriately the way we figure it's appropriately for church, we shy away from them. Church is not a club. Church is not a place where you go to find like-minded people so you can uh, uh, yell about how good everything is. Church is not an Amway meeting. Church is not a clubhouse where we go to play bridge. Church is a hospital. Church is a hospital where the blind, the lame, the, the sick come. And with our light inside of us, we should be encouraging them, teaching them, and causing them to grow. And if you're not interacting with any of them, you need to get a renewed light in your life so that you see these people that you think are less than what you should be or not your same race, not your same uh, social uh, status. All those things need to go because this body, this church is a hospital where you need to be healing people. You're all doctors in this hospital and you're called upon 
to help people. If somebody goes into the doctor's office and the doctor never even sees them, then how does, or makes up his mind, he sees the person there and says, well, I, I can't treat them because they're not uh, dressed the way I want them to. I can't be taking care of them because they're not uh, ready to be uh, in this hospital. They don't fit in with everybody else in this hospital. The church is a hospital where the blind, the weak, the lame come so that we can serve them. And every hospital has a morgue. The morgue is for people that have come here that are dead. They're dead in their sins. They're dead in their trespasses. They're dead in their way of life. They don't have any light inside of them. But the only difference in our morgue is we have words that will bring these people back to life. And it's the word of God and it's the light inside of us sharing with them that the Lord's forgiveness and that light can fill them. So let's go back to your basket now. We started out with, what is your basket? I didn't say, what is in your basket? I said, what is your basket? And the scripture we started out with says, that basket is taken, and nobody takes a basket and puts it over the light. The light of God in our lives, what are the baskets that we're taking and we're putting over that light that covers it up, that doesn't let it shine? The first basket, I think, is really the number one of everything, it's the basket of fear. What will others think? I might lose the respect. Uh, it might affect my job situation. My boss is an atheist, so I better not say anything concerning scripture, Jesus, or anything at all. The basket of fear of what somebody might say back to you because you claim the name of Jesus needs to be uncovered. The, the, the light needs to be uncovered with that basket. We not, we're not afraid to do whatever God has called us to do because he gives us the power, the peace, and the light to do those things. The next basket is a basket of guilt. The second chapter of Acts has a great song, and the chorus of it repeats over and over again. He took away our guilt and shame. We often see when we go before God how he works our, our guilt and takes it away, but also he removes the shame of it. We, the evil one beats us up and says, aren't you ashamed when you were a, a little kid and you kicked that dog? Aren't you ashamed how you treated this person? Aren't you? God takes away that guilt and shame. Yes, there are times we're supposed to look at the things of the past and learn from them, that we can rejoice with God, but we shouldn't be letting the evil one beat us up for things that happened years ago, that shame is taken care of when the light of God comes in and shines on us. There's a basket of doubt. I overheard the pastor, uh, Dick Bieber in Detroit, when I was attending a Messiah Church there. This was in downtown Detroit. And uh, not the best neighborhood, but I was in his uh, office and overheard, I was having a meeting, going to have a meeting with him, and overheard the a conversation on the telephone. And of course, I'm only hearing his side of the conversation. I'm not hearing the other person's. And I'm hearing, yes, yes, yes. He says, well, I prayed for you, yeah. He says, I prayed for you and it didn't work. That's impossible. It always works. Didn't work out in the timeline you wanted. Didn't work out in the way, but... When I pray for you, it works. And this is the thing about the doubt. When we pray for others, knowing that it's work, it's working. Not that uh, it happened exactly the way we want it. We want, God tells us, well, I want you to go over to this person's house and uh, share the gospel with them. 
And we go over and we feel like we're supposed to be talking to this person about Jesus. So they really can see this light. And we go over and talk to them about Jesus. And then they don't fall down on their face and, and accept Lord and say, yes, God. And we walk away all disheartened and, oh, Lord, you know, I, I, I thought you told me that's what to do. It's not to have doubt about what you're doing. If you feel God has directed you to do it, you go ahead and do it. Let the consequences be God's. If God told you what to do, he can take care of the consequences. Let him be his. Don't doubt. We're, we're encouraged to be stable in all ways. And the only way we're stable in all ways is to not cover up that light. To not doubt that God is involved in the things happening. And again, it brings us back to wait on the Lord and he'll, he will make clear to you what your direction is as the path is lit. lit. But don't doubt. The basket of pride. Pleasure about me. Pride is taking pleasure in how great I am. Or it's also <laughs> taking ple pleasure in who I'm associated with. Name dropping. That's the great thing of pride. So pride is having people look at me so that I'm looking good. The basket of pride needs to be thrown out. The only pride we have is that we were sinners and God took care of us. That we were dying and we were in the morgue at church and God lifted us, lifted us up. Others misinterpret our motives as believers. That's okay. You just do it anyway. Mother Teresa has a, 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 there's a great quote of hers about doing it anyway. In all the things that we do, no matter what people think, do it anyway. If we're supposed, to, if we give somebody to something, if we give some money to somebody, and somebody says, well, they're just going to use that to drink, that isn't what your consideration is. You just do it anyway. Don't be worried about what other people's do when you do things of grace. You let that person in your house, you know how stupid that is? They could be a robber. They could be, if God has directed you, just do it anyway. Don't be taking what other people say and putting that, infusing that in your decisions. Now, I'm not saying don't seek counsel. I have, well, really only one or two people that I consider counselors. I have things that happen in my life and I need guidance. And I have them pray about me and then I just ask them, what do you think? And they give me their wisdom and it helps me make my decision. But what's really important is that I don't go around to 15 people looking for somebody who will agree with the way I want to do things so that I can feel good about what I do. No, it's between you and God. You pray about it. And your motives are things between you and God. And you need to go forth with that light and just do it. And don't worry about what other people think. People will say to you, you're brainwashed. You're narrow-minded. You're closed-minded. Jesus is just a crutch. I take all those things as compliments. When somebody says to me, you're just brainwashed, I say, yeah, I had some pretty dirty brains. They could use a good washing. Somebody says, you're narrow-minded. I go, well, I'm on a narrow path. People say, you're closed-minded. I said, yeah, well, I used to be open-minded and my brains were hanging out all over the place. Jesus is just a crutch. Well, yeah, 
He's more than a crutch. I lean on Jesus and he carries me. Baskets that we talk about putting over, that are talked about in the scriptures about putting over that light that nobody puts over, they're woven. So no matter what basket you put on, no matter what basket we talk about you're having trouble with, some light always gets out. Some people always are going to see that light and wonder what's going on. That light, when it's covered with a basket though, we have problems because it gets less and less oxygen. And the less oxygen it has, the more it flickers. And we don't want that light to go out. Now, I'm not saying light goes out, lose your salvation. Don't even go there. But what I am saying, the light inside of us that shows Jesus to other people gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer the more we let these baskets into our lives. So today, I want to ignite that light. I want to reignite that light. I want to make that light grow. Uh, I want to brighten that light so that you have a vision of Jesus like God did, say, John did saying, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. You cry out, Behold the Lamb of God that you see Jesus with the light that he wants to put inside of you. Like Paul, his first question was, what do you want, Lord? And I talked about baskets, but each one of us needs to ask about the basket that we have and what its name is and how it's covering the light. So my prayer to you today is examine and look at those baskets and get rid of them and throw them away so that the fire of God can burn inside of you. Overturn that bushel basket. Get it, throw that basket away and be restored to the light of God that gives you joy.